welcome to Heaping Spoonful, a twice monthly conversation with restaurateurs, chefs, growers, and others who have helped generate the legends associated with eateries across the Mid-South. The team at Benny Keith is proud to sponsor this adventure with the goal of preserving the stories that have helped cultivate an amazing food scene across the Mid-South. So kick back and enjoy a heaping spoonful. Hello, everybody out there in podcast land, and welcome to another episode of Heaping Spoonful, the series that illuminates the chefs and restaurateurs who are setting the pace across the Mid-South. I'm Kelly Bass, a longtime foodie who has had the unique privilege to cover the Arkansas food scene for more than 30 years. Once upon a time, way back when, before we had TripAdvisor, before we had Yelp, before we had Facebook, I wrote weekly dining reviews for a couple of Little Rock newspapers in the 1980s and 1990s, and my, how things in that world have changed. But just like there used to be no Yelp, there also used to be no podcast. So I appreciate the technology that lets Heaping Spoonful happen. And I appreciate Benny Keith Foods Mid-South Division for sponsoring this series. Today, I'm very happy to have Austin Samuelson as our guest. Austin and his wife, Ashton, co-founded Tacos for Life in 2014. So Austin, welcome to Heaping Spoonful. Uh, Tacos for Life is like no other restaurant that I've known about and that it's really so much more than just feeding your guests or turning a profit. It's about helping others. And it's important for everyone to know that 24 cents of every purchase of tacos, a salad, or nachos is donated to Meal for Mission, which buys and distributes meals to hungry children throughout the logically named uh, organization, Feed My Starving Children. 24 cents doesn't sound like a lot of money, but it adds up quickly and it buys more food than most people would think. Your website, and you told me that the current number is that Tacos for Life across its locations, thanks to the generosity of the business and thanks to your your guests, have provided 13.6 million meals to starving children. Isn't that a crazy number? It's got to make you happy. Man, I, I tell you what, first off, Kelly, thanks for having us on this podcast. It's a, it's a really great podcast. And, uh, but yeah, we are, uh, we're over 13 million meals about to close in on 14 million. And quite honestly, we have to Ashton and I, we have to pinch ourselves every time we, uh, we see that number because it just, uh, it seems far bigger than we had ever expected. And, and we can't take any credit for it. Of course, uh, you mentioned this, but it's, a. Uh, the, the community of Arkansas and beyond has supported Tacos for Life and, and been more generous than uh, than you could ever imagine. And it's just been it's just been phenomenal. Well, you know, a lot of us have had an opportunity to donate money to worthy causes. And, and I know my wife, Ashley, and I are happy to do it. But boy, when you get a good meal in front of you and you just realize part of the, the proceeds of that meal are going, it sure makes it easy to do. So I, I would think the feeding mission is a reason that you you work so hard to grow tacos for life because the more you scale up, the more people who get helped. And you know, we're all I hope I would imagine anybody tuning in this podcast realizes how lucky we are and how we don't have to worry about where our next meal is coming from. But millions of people in the world do. So, the, the as you said, um, the more you grow the business, the more people who get fed. How many locations are there now? We're we're broadcasting in are recording this in the middle of May of 2020. So at this point in time, how many locations are there? Yeah, we have uh, 16 locations and we're spread across five different states. 12 of those are uh, corporately owned. So we own them and operate them. And then uh, four are franchise. And we are, uh, we're learning about franchising and, and really love the model and, and excited to see the future and see some growth in that area in the next coming years. Sure. And, you know, as I, the Internet makes research so easy. And when I searched for Tacos for Life, the very first thing that came up was an online article about the opening of a location outside Charlotte, North Carolina. I believe it was April of, two, of 2018. <clears throat> and I saw the couple who are the franchisees there and I read their quotes and they sound like they have a lot in common with Ashton and you and that they're so excited about what their uh, business is able to do. And I saw that on that very first day, they had a soft opening and they generated enough money on a soft opening day to buy more than 5,000 meals, which means, again, your work is being done, your mission's being carried out, even when you're not in North Carolina to do it. And that's going to, again, has to make Ashton and you very happy and proud. Oh, absolutely. And that's the, that's the phenomenal thing about franchising. They took our model of, you know, selling a taco and donating a meal and Chip, the, the franchisee there said, Hey, you know, we do these soft openings to practice. We're going to raise a bunch of meals before we even start selling tacos. And, 
you know, we said, all right, let's do it. And, uh, and he did it and sure enough. And he's about to open his second location out there, him and his wife. Sure. And they have a goal of raising 200,000 mils before they ever open their doors. Wow. And the, the thing is, Kelly, it, it's just such a crazy goal, but I know Chip and I've known him long enough to know now that he's going to find a way uh, to, to do it. You know, it's just, sure. it's incredible. So well, that's the fun thing about, uh, about doing this. It does put such a different spin on, 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 a, on what is a tough business and, you know, a business that can chew you up and spit you out. I see on your website, and by the way, it's a really nice website. So kudos to whoever uh, has built it and run it, but that you have some emerging markets. Like I, I saw Alabama and maybe that's no longer emerging. Does, does emerging mean that you're working on deals to get r- restaurants open there, whether it's your own or whether it's franchised? You know, really the intent there is to tell people, Hey, if you're interested in franchising, these are the places that we feel like tacos for life will do well. And really the best way to describe it is, is uh, we're really trying to stick to that Southeast market right now sure. and uh, Southeastern conference, you know, yeah. um, we've uh, we got a location in Oklahoma. We'll continue growing out there. Um, and uh, I've got some ton of interest in Nashville and, and all around, but we really see the South from, from here to North Carolina and, and on down as being a, a place to, where we really want to dig in and uh, think there's a ton of opportunity. Sure, sure. Well, clearly this is a passion for, for both Ashton and you and knowing a little about your backgrounds, that, that makes sense. If I, I believe you met at church camp uh, during high school and you, you didn't go to the same high school. You both did go to Washita Baptist University in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. And uh, I see that while you were uh, starting your career in real estate, Ashton was teaching at a Christian school in California. So clearly faith uh, has been a big part of your lives forever. Um, clear, and my wife's a Washita graduate as well, and it's a great school. So is that part of what helped bond you, you two and from the get-go? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's the foundation of, of what we do Um from a business and it's a foundation from what we do uh, as a family, but you're exactly right. You know, uh, being Christ followers, uh, love to look at the example Jesus set and he talks about loving others more than he talks about rules and a lot of other stuff. And, uh, you know, I think that's the fun thing about being in this business. Uh, we get to serve people and we get to serve them with a, a smile and, you know, you're like me. I just love to eat. I, I, I yeah. can't take any credit for these recipes. I just love to eat. And uh, when I eat good food, I feel loved. <laughs> you oh, know? I'm with so, you. So that's, that's what we're trying to do here, you know, just sure. share some good food and, and, and some life with that. Well, you know, no, no matter what people's religious outlook is, I mean, anybody who knows the story of Jesus uh, in, in the ever, what would Jesus do? Well, what Jesus did, would do would feed hungry people. And, you know, that's one of many things. That's so, exactly right. Yeah. So that, that is, yep. that's really great. Um, you know, your first foray, um, in this concept was, was it pizza for two in Conway? Um, so you're, you're, again, you're working in real estate, um, and then I think payment software company. And then all of a sudden your guys are back in Arkansas and you've got this place in Conway. How did, how did you make that leap? I mean, how did it go from what started as your career to, to turn into this very um, charity focused uh, restaurant concept? Uh, yeah, I tell you, if you would have asked Ash and I 10 years ago, uh, what we'd be doing right now, this would never have been on the radar. Um, so we, uh, we got, like you said, we went to Washita Baptist, uh, graduated and then, uh, moved out to California. And, uh, the, the focus for me, I wanted to work in real estate out there, commercial real estate. Ashton, uh, wanted to teach at a, uh, at a Christian school that was kind of a best in class, uh, school out there. And, uh, so we we're out there doing our thing and, uh, really, really enjoying life. We lived a block from the beach and, uh, we just fell in love with the food in Los Angeles and, and really all up and down California. That was, uh, besides going to the beach, eating was our hobby out there and <laughs> yeah. just, uh, fell in love and really, really was, uh, I, I would say for the first time in our lives, enlightened to, uh, all kinds of different types of food, um, uh, which was, which was cool. But we, uh, we heard something one day that, that really, it, it, it changed the trajectory and put us on this path we're on. We were, uh, we were, we were at church and, uh, there's a gentleman there from, uh, world vision, a uh, big, uh, uh, organization that does stuff all over the world to help those in need. And he was speaking and he made, uh, he made three comments that, uh, it, it really just flipped their lives upside down. The first was, and this was back in 2009. He said today, 18,000 children are going to start, are going to die uh, from starvation or malnutrition. Oh. 
but 18,000 children. So that happened yesterday, and it's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, the next thing that he said was, um, and this is what really blew my mind as well, was, you know, that, that doesn't have to be the case. The world produces enough food to, to feed everybody. It's a distribution problem. Exactly. And then the, the third thing he said, and we were, of course, in a church setting, but he said, you know, if, uh, if we as Christians would follow Jesus' example, what you just mentioned a minute ago about loving others, about just helping you know, forget all the rules, forget everything else. Just, just love somebody, you know, um, then, uh, we could, we could help, we could help in this, you know, the world food program, they say hunger is the world's single most solvable problem. And having been in Los Angeles for just a short time, falling in love with food, always being a food person, always just loving to eat and thinking about that next meal and what I was going to eat, you know, um, the thought that, that kids, are literally dying because they don't have enough food to eat. Just it, it wrecked us. We knew it was a problem. You know, you hear that hunger is a problem. It's a problem here in Arkansas. Um, but when you put it in that that number behind it, eighteen thousand, it really it really hit us pretty hard. So sure. Ash and I, we left there and we uh, we didn't know what to do. You know, it, it kind of hit us pretty hard. So we talked about it. We got some books and. Uh, we started sponsoring some kids. We started volunteering at the Union Rescue Mission. We just tried to get involved in any way we could. And um, we, what we found, Kelly, was this passion started growing in us. Mm-hmm. And what, we just couldn't get enough. You know, we wanted to do more. We wanted to do more, um, but we couldn't, you know, nothing seemed like the right fit for us, you know. And we felt like, okay, we, we wanted to do more than just sponsoring a kid. We wanted to do uh, something a little bit extra. We, in the meantime, we had found ourselves back in Arkansas. Um, Ashton was teaching at Little Rock Christian, and I was working with my dad doing some uh, real estate and development stuff here. And um, life was fine. Life was good. And we happened to be um, – we, we were at church again, <laughs> and, and the pastor literally said the same thing this guy had said about a year and a half before, which was – you know, just mind blowing, way too coincidental, you know? Sure. And, and at that point I was just thinking, okay, God, what are you doing here? You know? And I, I just zoned out. I couldn't tell you the rest of the thing he said, you know, in that sermon. But, um, I remember thinking, man, there's gotta be a solution. I love business, but how do we, how do we, uh, how do we take business and use that to help solve this, this great need that's out there. And that was right at the time Tom shoes was really getting popular. And that's the, you know, the concept where every shoe you buy, they donate a shoe. And I'll tell you something, Kelly. So, so I had this thought, you know, I, I thought to myself, having never worked in a restaurant a day in my life, having only been through the drive through and never stepped on the other side of the counter, I said, you know, we should do that in the restaurant setting. We could donate a meal and, and uh, for every meal we sold. And, and uh, you know, how hard could that be? You know, <laughs> sure. so, that just tells you right there how ignorant we were. But, uh, but we, we left there and uh, through some course of uh, some crazy events, we, we, uh, we turned that little wild, crazy, naive idea into reality. And about uh, nine months later, we opened our first restaurant that, that you mentioned, Pizza for Two, here in Conway. And uh, every pizza we sold, we donated a meal to Feed My Starving Children. That's the organization we still work with. And, um, it was, uh, I tell you, it was a, it was a complete wild ride. We, uh, we, we struggled from the funding standpoint. We had no idea how to set uh, a restaurant up. We had no idea how to cook pizzas. So we, uh, we, we did what, what every logical uh, person starting a restaurant does. We bought the first pizza oven. We set it up in my parents' basement at their house, which we just so happened to move back into while we were doing this. And we practiced cooking pizzas in the basement right next to our bed. We we smelled like pizza all the time. It was horrible, <laughs> Kelly. But it was. But you got it to, was. You got to crazy. eat the experiments. You know that's good. You got to eat. We we pizza. certainly did. We ate a lot of pizza, and and you know it was just a, it was a fun wild ride, a lot of adventure. We but we just had no I, we had no clue what we were doing. But I tell you, it was uh, it was fun. God provided. Uh, and and the people of of Conway and really all around Arkansas got behind us and supported us in a way that we never expected and supported the mission. And it was, uh, it was a very cool time. That was back in 2011 when we opened Pizza for Two. All right. Well, we'll pick back up the story in a minute. And we thank everybody for tuning in to this episode of Heaping Spoonful with our guest, Austin Samuelson of Tacos for Life. So we'll be right back. I hope you're enjoying this episode of Heaping Spoonful. We at Benny Keith Foods enjoy talking about the food scene almost as much as we enjoy providing the top quality ingredients that help restaurateurs and chefs across the Mid-South create their magic. 
Now let's dive even deeper into the culinary world with your host, Kelly Bass. Welcome back to Heaping Spoonful. I'm Kelly Bass. I'm visiting with Austin Samuelson of Tacos for Life. So you just told us about getting pizza for two up and running in Conway, uh, buy a pizza that your money helps contribute a meal to uh, help a starving child. Um, so you did that for a while and tell our listeners how you, how you made, you know, how you pivoted from pizza to tacos because they're, they're not, while they're things I love to eat and we lot, a lot of us love to eat, they're not exactly the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it was a, uh, it was an interesting journey. We, um, we found ourselves doing pizza for two. We'd, we'd been doing it for about a year and a half and, and we were, we were grinding it out, you know, and just really struggling day to day to try to figure out how to make this restaurant work, how to provide a product that people, uh, would, would love and crave and, and buy. And, um, we had a, it, over the course of a week, we had two friends in our lives. Both of them made comments to us in very loving ways. And now in hindsight, you realize, okay, now I see what they're saying, but they said, Hey, we love the mission. We love donating. Uh, we love donating meal, a meal for every time we buy a meal with you guys. But have you thought about doing a different concept? <laughs> so right. uh, Kelly, that was, uh, you know, you talk about listening to your guests there and, uh, and your friends and, and maybe that was their kind way of saying, Hey, this is, this is nice, but maybe we can do better, you know? Sure. And, um, and so, you know, we, we, we took that and, Ash and I have always been passionate about uh, Mexican food, always been passionate about tacos and, and really who doesn't love a good taco. And the fun thing about tacos are you can just do, you can do anything with, you know, you can cover all kinds of different types of styles right. of food and, um, you know, rolled up into this tortilla and, and fun things happen. So we, uh, we started dreaming about that. And um, about that same time, we, uh, we went to Africa for the first time with the organization we work with. And we had, we had been abroad before we'd been abroad growing up and some experiences, um, at OBU and, um, you know, every time you travel outside of this great country, you realize how fortunate we are. Oh, and yeah. on this particular trip, we went to, uh, went to Swaziland, Africa, which is, uh, it's, it's nestled on three sides by South Africa. So it's in the Southern uh, portion of Africa, went there. Uh, very, very poor country and, um, a lot of, a uh, lot of need there. And our first day we were there, we went to, uh, one of the feeding centers where these, uh, these kiddos that we get to raise meals for get a, a warm meal every day. Okay. And, um, of course, being the new people, the, the young, uh, naive folks, uh, that we were, they, uh, the folks were with us and, Hey, y'all get up, y'all, y'all serve this food. Okay. And it's rice based meal. And you can see examples of it when you go into our restaurant. We started scooping, Ash and I did. Mm -hmm. Long line of kids, okay? And we started scooping. I'm scooping. Ash is handing out the food, you know, smiling and just, it's like, oh, my goodness, this is everything we've worked for. And this is coming, you know, this is it, you know? And and I'm looking at this big cast iron pot, and I'm I'm thinking, man, this line is a lot longer than the food we have in here. And sort of scooping. And I, I looked at Ash and I said, Hey babe, I don't, I don't think we got enough food here. <laughs> so I turned around and I went back and one of the uh, local ladies, uh, you know, I, I talked to her, she didn't speak very good English, but she said, that's all we have. And, mm. and Kelly, I'll never forget that feeling. We ran out of food with about 20 kids left. Yeah. Mine. Oh. And it's hard for me to even tell the story, but you know, and, and the way they did it at this center, at this feeding center, the youngest kids ate first. So the kids that didn't get any food were the boys that were 10 to 12 to 13 year old boys. And you know how much uh, a 12 year old boy eats. You, know, you remember back to your days of that. Sure, sure, sure. And um, so anyhow, myself and a few others, we scrounged around. We went to a local, it was like a little uh, banana hut, you know, and they literally had bananas hanging and a few other things, Coca-Cola, of course. And uh, we grabbed some bananas and they had uh, some loaves of white bread and we ran those back and gave it to those kids. And, um, That's good. you know, I just remember looking at Ashton and, and she said, we're, we're not going to do anything else. This is, this is what we got to do. We've got to fix this. You know, we got to be a part of fixing this. So this doesn't happen again. And, and that's really what, so to answer your question, that was a very long way of telling how we pivoted over to tacos, but that was the point that really galvanized this of like, okay, we got to figure this out. We've got to, we're going to move into this new concept. We've got to make the best food that, that we could ever imagine so that people crave it 
and we're able to feed a lot of kids. And uh, it really motivated us to, to move quickly and move into Tacos for Life. Did you did you open the first Tacos for Life in the in the same building where your pizza place had been? Or did you go somewhere? No, we actually opened, yeah, across town. Um, and we learned very quickly that people do, in fact, love tacos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, and about about six about six months later, we ended up closing uh, Pizza for Two, uh, which was a very hard decision. It, it felt like our baby, you know, we were giving up on it. Um, but we uh, we made the, the decision to close it, and we converted that into a Tacos for Life as well. And so well, you, um, you that know, was kind of the... Pizza's, uh, I love pizza, but it, it's... You know, tacos, You again, variety is easier, and it's also a lower price point. I mean, you can get into a full meal of yep. tacos cheaper than you can get into a big old pizza. And so, and like I say, you know, it's your your mission is to feed kids. And so you need to find the thing that is the most popular thing that people will buy. Therefore, you can feed more kids and provide a great experience because, you know, your mission statement is a noble one, and I, I love it. Here, here's the mission statement. Our philosophy is based on delivering an unforgettable experience, great food, genuine service, and a mission focus that changes the world with every meal. But let's face it, the charitable work your organization and obviously your customers make happen is important, but you still got to have a good product to sell and experience that's pleasant for your guests. So talk about your focus areas on on food and service and what you put forefront on both of those to make sure that people want to keep coming back and keep helping the kids. Yeah, I... I I think one of the the things that really sticks out to me, I remember, you know, probably six months into pizza for two struggling along and my dad was doing our books and he asked Ashton and and my wife is a, she is a health food nut. She, um, she is all about eating healthy and, um, very disciplined in her eating. And he asked her, he said, Ashton, if, uh, if you could feed more kids on fried chicken, would you do that? And, and me, um, being, uh, you know, I love some fried chicken. I, I was like, yeah, babe, of course, you know, <laughs> um, but she, I remember that was a very galvanizing point for her. And, and I would say one of those kind of cornerstones we look back on when we look at the values of our company and she said, yeah, I would do that. I would do that. And, um, and so for, for us, Kelly, to answer your question on this, you know, we learned that with pizza for two, it's, it's one thing to have this kind of fun and unique kind of mission attached to it. And you'll get some, um, some excitement from the community. People will support it. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we want to create something that you crave. And mm-hmm. if there's a mission or no mission attached to it, you're going to come eat with us because, uh, the food is great. The service is great. The environment's great. And then we talk about our service. We, we, got, we have our three for one service model and you mentioned all the elements and we do the three things so that we can feed more kids. That's the one. And that's what it all circles around. And we don't always get it right, but um, every day it's about getting just a little bit better, 1% better, uh, so that you can come eat with us because you want to, not because you feel like, well, that's a nice thing to do. I, you know, I want you to come eat with us because you're just craving that fried chicken taco, yeah. you know, and, and you, that you can't get anywhere else or that world championship cheese dip that you can't get anywhere else. You know I mean? That's that's how we want to feed kids, and that's that's our you know what we strive to do. Right, the mission will will take you plenty far, but but you you got to have people just wanting your food because they're not going to just come hold their nose just to to make a a difference for 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 kids. So that's cool. And exactly. So you guys also, I see you do catering, and the and the menu options are vast. Is 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 catering a fairly large percentage? I don't even know from restaurant to restaurant. Is that usually a pretty significant portion of revenue, or is it fairly small? You know, it, for us, it's, uh, it's, it's a growing portion. Uh, we see a lot of opportunity. Um, we, we fit what we've learned. And of course, this, this pandemic we're in has changed everything. Um, but we, we, we do a lot of weddings and mm-hmm. we fit this unique, um, you know, we're not as expensive as your nicer, you know, full plate meals, but we're kind of something that's a little more cost effective but at the same time, you know, fun and hip, like, right. you know, we set up uh queso bars at weddings and, uh, who doesn't love, uh, you know, a, a <laughs> yes. bar of queso, you know, so, so it's a, it's, it's a fun, fun thing to do, you yeah, know, that's cool. And then also, again, uh, uh, tooling around your um, website and, uh, I saw a page about mobile packs, which, and it looked like a, a scene that I've been involved in at the food bank where people are all together putting together meal packs. Is that, is that what that's all about? Tell me about mobile packs. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's where, you know, so what we do is we raise these meals, we're making donations on a monthly basis to feed my starving children. 
And um, what we do is once a year, they come down to, we do it geographically. So we actually did, the last one we did was that weekend, the whole world shut down um, with the virus. Right. And that was the last mobile pack event they had had. But um, it, it's, it's an incredible experience because they bring all the raw, raw ingredients down and we put together what's called these mana pack meals that they, and it's a, it's got rice, soy protein, dehydrated veggies, and a vitamin mix in it. Mm -hmm. And so the incredible thing is, is you literally have, you know, kids from the ages of four to five coming and helping putting these things together, helping feed kids their own age. Right. They're getting to hear about the fact that, Hey, there are kids that, that, that have a very different upbringing than you have on the other side of the world, but you're getting to make a difference. And then we have, um, you know, senior citizens there. My, my grandma's Sunday school class always come. They always bring earplugs because we play music real loud. And, <laughs> and it's a, but yeah. you know, they, they do the stickers, you know, so it's an incredible event. It's, it's just two hours. We run these two hour shifts. You come, you sign up for two hours, you get packed, you have a ton of fun. Um, you, you dance, everybody's singing and you're packing these meals together and, you know, depending on the size of the mobile pack. So at the Conway ones, you know, typically, you know, we'll have four or 500 people at each two hour session and, you know, they'll, they'll pack 70, 80,000, hundred thousand mils yeah. in that two hour time frame. And it's just a, it's a great way for people to be able to, um, get involved, do something, uh, just like you described with the, the food bank, but be able to get to, to get to do something as a community. And, and for us as a restaurant, to be able to thank our guests for eating with us and, and give them an extra step in the journey, those who are interested. And it's, uh, it's been very successful and something we just, we love doing and, and ready for the world to get back to normal so sure. that we can continue doing those. Well, well, it makes it real. You know, you can know, you can know 24 cents of the meal you bought is going to buy a meal for a kid, but now you're actually seeing it, you're feeling it, you're touching it, and you know, it's going to be shipped to a kid who needs it. And it's, Sounds like a perfect way to supply as much nutrition as possible for the lowest cost and the and the easiest shipping. So that that's fabulous. Well, as we've already mentioned a couple of times, you know, we're recording this episode in mid May 2020, and we hope we hope we're on the downhill slide of the COVID 19 pandemic. But it's a little bit early to say on that. Uh, so restaurants in Arkansas were allowed to reopen May 11th with a maximum of one third capacity, and then lots of rules about masks and social distancing. Did you guys? open your restaurants that day? And if not, when do you expect to, or have you already? And if you had, how's it going so far? Yeah, we did. We opened all of, all of our Arkansas restaurants on uh, May 11th. We had already opened our Tennessee and Oklahoma and uh, Texas locations before that. So we, we had the advantage of seeing how folks reacted there, but it's been, uh, it's been good to be able to, to be able to invite our guests back in, be able to connect with them. Um, and so we're, we're very thankful. We're looking forward to this next phase where hopefully some restrictions will loosen up a little bit mm -hmm. more. Um, but there is a, I tell you, there's a need and, uh, what, what we're hearing from our guests is they're excited to get out. They want to get out. They want to be able to eat inside. They, they really miss that dining experience and they're, uh, they're willing to, uh, trust us enough to come in. So That's it's good. been, uh, it's been a nice journey good. to get back into serving people inside. And were you all able to do pretty well? I mean, relatively well when you were able to do curbside, um, you know, take out and only, or did you all, were all your stores open doing those? Yeah, we uh, we did temporarily shut down one of our stores that did not have a drive to mm -hmm. um, the rest of them, okay, except for one other one. Um, yeah, we, we have drive throughs We're not a fast food concept. And um, but I tell you, um, we were very fortunate. We, we went from, you know, 50 percent of our business being dine in to, you know, overnight to 100 percent being takeout. And it's it, this has been one of those times where you know, we, we've really got to focus on some areas, uh, such as speeding up our drive through. We, we cut our drive through time by 50% since this has started and right. we'll, we'll keep it that way, you know? Sure. So we've, we've been able to improve in some areas that, that we quite honestly needed to get better at. And, um, we've, we launched online ordering, uh, thank God, yeah. <laughs> uh, earlier, uh, this year, at the beginning of the year. And we've, uh, we, we've been really been blessed to get to, um, promote that. And our guests have, have really taken to our online order. And we have an app that people can order through and just had a ton of success and 
seen a lot of sales coming through there. So we've been very fortunate with that as well. Well, super. That's great. But we are, we're certainly ready for life to get back to normal though. I, I will say that, are. you know, I, the, so. the things we took for yeah. granted that I will never the rest of my life take for granted, you know, it's, it's, it's something, but well, listen, I thank you again, Austin, for sharing your interesting and very inspiring story. Uh, Tacos for life. It's making a real difference for kids who really need someone to make a difference. So congratulations and keep up the good work. Uh, we appreciate everyone, lis- everyone listening to heaping spoonful today. Remember that we have, more than 15 other episodes ready for you to enjoy on whichever platform you use to listen to podcasts. So thanks again. And until next time, have a great day. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Heaping Spoonful. On behalf of all of us at Benny Keith Foods, Mid-South Division, please know how much we love connecting you with the legends of the culinary scene and their unique stories. I look forward to the next time we can offer you another Keeping Spoonful.